Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at QNAP's budget entry level 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switch, the QSW1105 5T. Long name, but is it any good? Let's find out. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at QNAP's QSW1105 5T. This is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch uh, available at relatively reasonable prices. Although I will say I've just looked on amazon.co.uk today after buying this uh, just before the weekend and it's just gone up 15 pounds. Now I know that is the case for a lot of things these days. So yeah, possibly not quite such the bargain that it was when I got it, but I will leave some links in the video description anyway. So if you want to check it out, you can see what the price is like in your local area. So in today's video, we're going to go through, do a quick unboxing, see what we actually get for the money, uh, go through specifications. The thing I'm more interested in is actually what I can get in terms of speed improvements with my NAS. I've recently upgraded my NAS to a 2.5 gigabit USB adapter, so hopefully I should be able to get some much better transfer speeds. I already know what I can get on the network doing PC to PC. We've already established that with the QSW1108, which you can check out from the links below. That is the eight port version of this. But because of the uh, the strange kind of geography of what we've got here going on, I've got to have a switch in one room and a switch in another with a cable link in the two. Yeah, it's a little bit of a mess, but it's uh, certainly easier than ripping up all the carpets and the floorboards and putting in new cable in, which is something that you don't have to do with 2.5 gigabit ethernet switches. They can use your existing Cat5e cable in, so you don't have to go through the expense of putting in new copper cables, all that kind of stuff. So in terms of the actual outlay, not too bad at all, and you are in theory getting two and a half times the speed of your traditional gigabit switch, or considerably more if you're still using 10100. Anyway, I'm Witcher and on now, let's take a look at this thing. So first of all, as you can see, obviously, the QSW1105-5T, five port hub, uh, some really cool features on this. It's a fanless device, first of all, which is absolutely excellent. So if you're using this in an office environment or just for home multimedia, you don't have to worry about noisy fans, which generally get noisier and noisier as time goes on, as the bearings wear out, etc., etc. Also, there is built-in collision detection, so if you're someone like me and you've got just cables everywhere and you're just randomly plugging things in, if you plug in something which is looping back or is causing issues with the network, the switch will actually intelligently block off that particular device or those two ports and prevent the system from shutting down, which is actually brilliant. Uh, also, there's all metal design, so the whole thing acts as a massive heatsink, hence going back to that fanless design. You've got five ports on there, so there is 2.5 gigabit ethernet on each one, you have got a total switching capacity of 25 gigabits per second. So take into account each port, 2.5 gigabit up and down, times that by five, you get your 25 gigabit switching speed. So you don't have to worry if you do plug in all your devices, you're not gonna lose any bandwidth or have any issues with that. And I suppose best of all, one of the key features of it, it is effectively plug and play, which is what we'll be doing later when we swap out our old gigabit switch. Literally just unplug the cables, plug this bad boy in, plug in the cables and hopefully get some much better network speeds. So looking inside the box, first of all, we are greeted with our quick installation guide and as per usual, goes through all the usual kind of stuff, tells you what the ports do, what the lights do, all that kind of stuff, and also gives you some details of what size it is. I'll put all that in the video description as well so you can check that out for yourselves. Comes with a set of four rubber feet, so if you're having this as desk mount, you can do that. Rubberized feet which are attached to the bottom. You can, of course, if you want to, you can wall mount it. They do include some uh, wall plugs and some screws if you want to keep it mounted on the wall. I would suggest because obviously 2.5 gigabit ethernet does generate heat as most devices do and because this is fanless and is essentially a kind of a massive heat sink itself, try and put it in somewhere which is relatively well ventilated or at least ambient temperatures. You don't want to put it inside of a cupboard or something ideally, you do want a little bit of airflow going through it. Otherwise you may find your network speeds reduced as the system gets very hot. It does come with a UK molded power plug, which actually the previous version, the QSW1108, actually had a multi-device one, so you just take off that plug and choose it with whichever location you're in. But this comes with a three pin molded plug. So the output on this one is 12 watts. So only 12 watts needed on this, and that is obviously full capacity, so it's gonna generally use less than that, and it is working on a 12 volt system and puts out one amp hour. The cable itself, as with the previous one, you're looking around about 90 centimeters and it does terminate into a barrel style connection. So potentially if you wanted to replace this, you could do quite easily with either a longer cable or a different model. And last but not least, we've got the actual switch itself, which is uh, actually a really nice looking unit. Again, full metal construction, you've got the QNAP logo on the top there, very discreetly done. 
sticker on there just to remind you that you have now got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch which is great it does also support i should say does support the older standards so maybe if you're considering upgrading soon but you don't have 2.5 gigabit ethernet on various devices in your home isn't a problem backwards compatible so 2.5 ethernet also gigabit and also 10100 are supported straight out of the box on the front there's two leds so you've got a power led there's also a collision LED, which will flash red when there's a problem with the Ethernet. Again, we showed that in more detail in the 1108 video. You've got the five ports on the front, all clearly labeled, one, two, three, four, five. And something which I actually do like on this a lot is the fact that the LEDs are actually above the individual sockets. So when you've got something plugged in, you know which one it is. So there's no guesswork to work out which is actually functioning at what speed. I like that a lot. On the front also, got the DC input jack. That is something I possibly would have preferred to have seen on the back. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section. Sometimes with these kind of devices, I'd probably like to have the illumination on the front and maybe all the cables on the back. Actually saying that, I will show you some cutaways of how I've got the other units set up in our front room. It actually works quite well with everything plugged into the front, so no real worries there. If you want to take it apart, not that you should do, but you can do. Two screws in the top, three screws in the back, and you can remove this top section, which reveals the chipset inside with a really nice big heat sink and also there is another thermal pad which attaches the motherboard to the base of the unit itself you've got a lot of ventilation and it uses the honeycomb style ventilation which generally is the most efficient so you've got it on one side there and also on there so potentially if you wanted to you could mount it kind of that way up so you've got cold air coming in the bottom and convection pulling hot air out the top even if you do it that way mount it on the wall with the QNAP logo because the ventilation is towards the top it is going to breathe quite easily on the back you've got the four areas for putting the rubber feet if you're going to desk mount it and also you've got the section there for wall mounting also you've got your things like your mac address and all that kind of stuff so i think that's pretty much it for the intro of the device itself let's get this thing set up and see what it's actually like now i will be showing you on the screen coming up some tests with the system running as it is currently with gigabit speeds then i'm going to swap over to switch and then we'll look at the improved speeds after and see what difference it actually makes Okay, so first of all, let's take a quick look. There is the uh, details there of the unit itself. And as you can see, it's currently retailing at £95, which is £15 dearer than actually what it was. And it even says there is, it's 12% down on what it was, but no, it has actually been less than that. And I think if we look at the three camels, we can see, yeah, it has been on there. It's 7807 And on Amazon, they've had it for 8074 which is what I actually paid for it. I think it was slightly less than that, but... Yeah, you get the general idea. So potentially it could be cheaper. Always make use of the three camels. It's quite handy to uh, check out price comparisons. So anyway, that is the switch itself. You can see there and all the details, size measurements, etc. So let's head over to a test. So this is a program called Land Speed Test. This is actually quite useful and I've set it up so that at the moment it's actually looking at one of the uh, shared drives on the network. So this is testing one gig of data to and from our shared location, which is currently running through a gigabit switch. So let's click the start. This won't take very long. And you can see there's the right in progress bar going across. We should be getting somewhere around about 100 megabytes per second. That would be normal. And there we go, pretty much bang on, slightly over. So 100 megabytes per second for the writing speed to our shared drive. And our reading speed, I'm guessing, is going to be pretty much the same. Yeah, 110 megabytes per second. So that's a pretty good example of what we're actually doing. This is actually writing to our shared drive, which actually, if I show you there, so yeah, we, it's on our TARDIS drive. So yeah, you see how that works. So let's now set up the new switch and see how much of an improvement we can get. Okay, so that was all. It took a uh, very quick, very plug and play. The hardest bit was actually trying to reach the, uh, the socket to plug the darn thing in. Anyway, I've just done a quick test to make sure everything's working and we are connected at 2.5 gigabit Ethernet speeds, which is absolutely awesome. And let's run a quick test and you can see the difference. And look at the green bar. She's flying. So there we got writing speed of 206.93 megabytes per second and the read speed of 261.79. That is impressive. Not quite two and a half times the speed for writing, which uh, I kind of expected. I think I'm going to be slightly limited there to the actual ability of the hard drives inside my NAS in terms of what they can transfer. Maybe I should put an SSD cache drive in there to speed things up a little bit, possibly. But certainly that is considerably better. Like that a lot. 
So there you go, nice and easy, very straightforward to do, and the NAS is certainly considerably quicker. I'm very, very pleased with that. For those of you that are longtime viewers or uh, talk on the Discord, you'll know that transferring files to and from my NAS at the gigabyte speeds, although it is very nice, it could be quicker. And there is that downtime, especially when you're looking at sort of 25 to 40 gigabyte files, which quite often do happen when you're recording in 4K. Yeah, it does take up a little bit of time. So that should be dramatically reduced, give me more time to make quality content, allegedly. Anyway, hopefully this video has been interesting to you and maybe you're considering upgrading to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet yourself if you are. Uh, certainly QNAP switches, definitely well worth look, taking a look at. Uh, this one actually, I was very lucky. Some of you guys that join us on our live streams, etc., and contribute to the channel. Uh, this effectively was purchased out of your kind donation. So thanks to everyone who uh, joins us in the live streams. And if you haven't already joined us in the live stream previously, so maybe consider joining us at 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, that is slightly debatable depending on how ready I am. But anyway, 8 o'clock UK time, Saturday evenings. If you want to join us, you feel free to do so. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.